Does anyone know what we're doing here? This one eight hundred Chef Show. I'm your culinary coach, Chef Rock. <laughs> I'm your Thank host, you. Mazira. Thank you for that <laughs> unheralded applause. I'm your host, Mazira <laughs> Culinary Knowledge. He's the chef with all the answers. <laughs> As I say, if I don't know how to do it, I'll make it up. <laughs> That's the best way to learn. Why are we here? <laughs> Why are we here? Tell us, Dan. Uh, so this all started because of everybody losing jobs and financial hardships during Corona. Um, Nick Lad actually posted, and we're going to share it to the 1-800-CHEF page as well, but... Obviously, Good. the world is a little more in turmoil. So we're trying to, uh, yes, this started as raising money for the Rhode Island Hospitality Foundation, but we're posting a link for a whole bunch of other organizations that if you have the money to spare, there's a lot of people that could use help right now. And nice. I agree with that 100%. Trying to make a little bit of a difference here. All right. So as you know, the protein, Dan, is oh. pork chops. Can I take a peek yeah, at those? Can I Those are beautiful. Hold their, one up for a second to the camera. Dan, hold one up. I want to I'm gonna talk about it for a second. Ooh, that's a, what angle that's do a we center, want? It's a center cut. <laughs> yeah, it what, is. What about an inch, inch and a half? Yeah, it's about an inch. That's great. So you don't have to remove the fat off of it. Uh that's that's good fat that'll cook like up. Fats. But yeah, no, fat's good. I mean that, that breaks down the uh the meat strands, makes it nice and tender, so you're through there. Now that one Pork chop in the back, which got a little brown tail on it. Did you see it? That that is like near the end of the center cut where the tenderloin is, or it, it's just a, a nice softer piece of meat. I wish you could buy that whole piece. Well, you can, but it's more expensive. But the center cut is pretty lean, so we're going to cook it pretty fast. Okay. First thing we got to do is make a dry row. You see all those dry ingredients in front of you, Dan? Oh, Mix them all in a bowl. Okay. Well, first off, you have chili powder. Yeah, we do. Just pour that. Just pour that right in the bowl. Garlic powder. You have sugar. Salt. Salt and black pepper. pepper. Yep. Black pepper. Throw it all in. Yep. Then mix it up. You can mix it with your hands because you're going to rub the meat. So just give that a good blend. And, you know, these, these rubs are great because if this. you're going to <laughs> use, like make a double, triple batch, put most of it away and only use what you're Because once your hands go into that and you start touching the meat, this, it's been contaminated, meaning that you don't want to save it with raw yeah. meat juice in there. That's bad. You can get sick. So this is like the perfect amount for all four pulp chaps. Okay. And uh, then you throw the rest away. Don't save it. Okay. You don't want to get sick, Sounds right, good. Dan? So you want to rub no, those the pork here. chops. What's that? I said getting sick is not the goal here. <laughs> no, it's not. So you got to be right. safe in the kitchen. So Would what you you're going to spread it on first out? or put them in? Then, and then start spreading some of that dry rub on both sides, on all four chops. Uh, right on the and pan. While you're, doing, while you're doing that, you can heat up the pan. So you want to rub that all in, both sides. You can rub it on the fat part, too. Yep. While you're doing that, I'm going to have a little Italian red wine in a jelly jar. This is how we used to drink it when we were kids. <laughs> Flip them mm. over. Jelly jar. Because if we ever had good glasses in the, in the house and we broke one, my dad would, <laughs> we can't keep anything good here. You know? So we ended up drinking out of jelly jars and glasses that we got at the gas station. Remember, they were giving glasses away with Daffy Duck on them and all kinds of stuff. Perfect. Nothing glasses. like drinking alcohol out of a Looney Tunes cup. You know what? It just <laughs> makes me feel silly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think we're rubbed. You were rubbed up? We're rubbed. Both sides. You know Both what? Sides, you all the sides. Yeah, we still got some. Hey, you know what? Make sure you get the sides real well. Is there anything wrong with just putting some right in the pan? <laughs> yeah, it's, it'll burn. Oh, okay. If it's loose in the pan, then you go, it'll burn up. See, this is, this is why we ask questions. No, no, and that's why I give you answers. <laughs> you better listen. <laughs> <laughs> so the pan's nice and hot. You want to, like, medium-high yep. heat. Yep, and then you want to put some oil in there. All right, we got a medium right Medium-high. Medium yep. And then you want to get that uh, Nike sock. Oh, I got holding it. Holding the oil. Episode one, throwback for the real followers. There you go, my brother. <laughs> Give it a good coating of the bottom. Yep. 
just gonna wash my hands real quick. Well, put well first before you wash your hands. Put the pork chops in. No, I have tongs for that though. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, but then the tongs are going to be all contaminated. Okay. No. Way. It just make it easier, you know? Then, you don't have to, you know, then your hands will be thoroughly clean for the next step. Perfect. So you got a nice sizzle right off the bat. Right? Oh, yeah. That's what happens when you preheat that pan. And a little tip. Um, if you're going to pre-rub the, the, the choppers, you can leave them out on the counter for a little while. Don't come out of the refrigerator right into that frying pan because that brings the temperature way down really quick. So okay. if you make meat almost room temperature, uh, yeah. so you can leave it out ahead of time for 20 minutes say, covered. We yeah, we took it out to, for the prep to shoot the video. So it's been sitting on the counter for about 15 to 20 minutes. That's correct. Perfect then. So that was just a waste of time I just said. Yeah, I <laughs> For the people that aren't sitting here prepping with no, me. Like that. Yeah. Damn, you don't have to answer me on that. You know what we I'm talking it. about. We got brother. it. You know what I'm talking about, my brother. You're good. So, what you, would you make in that pan? You got some side dish? We, yeah, we got some uh, farro with mushrooms. Oh, nice. Cooking that up. That'll be good. That'll be good. So, while those are searing, yep. check them out. Peek on the bottom. Use your tongs and peek on the bottom to see if they're browning up because then you can flip them and then they'll slow cook. Yeah. Is that good? It looks a little. I can't really tell. Yeah. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a little longer. It looks a little. When light. they get nice and brown, then yep. flip them over. Okay. And uh, and then we'll slow cook those puppies while we're making the next part of this dish. Sounds good. So, I like uh, certain toppings, you know, on pork chops. So they have a neutral flavor, but sometimes they could be a little boring. Yep. So what we're going to do is make a compound butter. Oh, I see you. You remember what the compound butter is? Mm-hmm. It's butter with other ingredients added to, added to it to give it a particular taste or flavor. So you have the uh, stick of butter. Yep. Let me flip these the, real quick. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to give them a flip, that's that's perfect. And then you want me to turn this down so they're slow cooking? Uh, you can turn it down to a medium. All right. You got a medium. It. Okay. We got a butter. So now, so is it room temperature? It's a little squishy. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Okay, and soft. put it, put it in that bowl. Okay. Ooh, very room temperature. <laughs> which is good. Which is fine. Okay. You just don't want it melted like where it's dripping all over the place. Just yep. pliable, because we're going to harden it back up. All right. And in this particular case, we wanted to give it some unique flavor profile. So uh, we got chives, right? Chopped chives. Yep. Give it that little color and uh, onion bite. I believe we go with about a tablespoon. Yep. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but you don't want to overpower it with just one, especially an onion type uh, flavor profile. Uh, we got lemon and orange zest. Yep. Now, how did you zest it? Do you have a zester? Yeah, we used the the normal zest, like a grater type thing. Yeah. Yep that that works. You, when you grate though, when you use zest, you want to make yeah. There you go. You got a zester. <laughs> yeah, you just want to make sure you get the orange or the yellow part, not the white. The pith is yep. a little bit. So for the zest, that's where a lot of the oils are, and you're going to get that really strong, beautiful flavor of orange and lemon. And then we have uh, from that one lemon, you got a little lemon juice, about a teaspoon. Yep. There you go. You're good, Dan. <laughs> and then we have. Uh... Yes. So you grated it, right? Not chopped. I did. Nope. Perfect. We used actually the, the, the same thing that we used for the lemon and orange. That's okay. I mean, we it's not a lot. When you grate it, yeah, no, you're, you're it's, actually it's uh, pulling just the, uh, the meat out of the fiber, which is good. So you get that full in advance. I would do it, you know, like like you just did it right before you started. A little bit of hot, little, little hot sauce, Dan. A little hot sauce, yep. Yeah, a little hot sauce. So what kind of hot sauce you use? We went to Tabasco. So I actually wanted to give a shout out. I don't know where we put it. Where do, here it is. So my uh, my cousin. My uncle lives in Utah. My cousin obviously lives out there too, but he works for this bakery called Red Bicycle Bakery. And just this week, he sent us three bottles of this hot sauce, and I really wanted to use it. 
but I was told by my family and by Nicolette's family that I would be the only one eating it if I used it. So it's here. Is it that hot? It's, it what? says it's made with habanero. I tasted it the other day, and it's the hottest habanero hot sauce I've ever had. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Oh, so, I love some so of that. We went Check them chops. Yeah. See if they need a flip. We ended up just going with Tabasco for the look, sake of the good. Meeting. They look good. Yeah, keep cooking them. What's nice yeah. is that the sugar will caramelize and those spices start, uh, when they get toasted, they take the smoky flavor on. So the last ingredient are the pecans. So you want to blend that all together. You want the pecans with the, the butter? In. I missed you there. Blend this yeah, first? Put, put them right in there. All right. Put them right in. You got it. Okay, now you want to mix that all up so it's all blended. I would use a spoon. Yeah. Right. Never know where those hands have been. I just washed them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all combined. And that's why butter room temperature where it's soft but not melting and separating. Yep. So you want to put it all. Don't worry about breaking it apart. Just give it a good push. Now, with just... compound butters, I mean, you could, do, you could do one with just lemon zest and lemon, you know, where you could do it with like a Bernays with some capers and garlic some shallots. <laughs> and onion are heavy on the garlic. Roasted nothing garlic better. is incredible. There's nothing better than garlic yeah. butter. Oh, yeah. let me tell you, especially if you're putting it on the, the way we're going to do it. So blend it up really well. I just lost one. Give it a good blend like you just did. Now get a sheet of uh, plastic wrap. Okay. Maybe one about this big. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Nick, what's holding it? Uh, about like um, <laughs> high. So grab that butter, yep. the whole mixture, yep. put it with a spoon and plop it right down into the middle of that plastic wrap. Yep. Okay. You got it. Now fold the top over. Okay. Either way. Yep. And then with your hand, make it into a tube shape. Form it into a tube shape and push it together to make sure it's all tight. Almost like if you're making sushi. Don't go too far to the edge. Leave right. a little of that plastic wrap at the end. Good. And then roll it so it's a nice cylinder. Okay. Can go put the pork cap? Nice okay. cylinder shape. And while you're waiting, pop that in the freezer. Pop it in the freezer? There you go. Just pop it in the freezer. Okay. Now we're going to check them pork chops. Yeah, I just flipped them. They're, the bottom was looking nice and, nice and toasted. Well... You know, uh, I'm not there to feel them because I could push down on the center of that pork chop with my what thumb. Part of your thumb is it supposed to be? Or you could touch that with, for the temperature. Um, or the safest way is to cut it open in the center with a knife and, and bend it a little to make sure it's not cooked uh, like medium rare. <laughs> so you want to make sure it's well. It's cooked through. It's white. It's cooked through? Yeah, so we'll give it like another like two minutes. It's a little pink at the center. Okay. Damn, we can't, we can't hear you. I said it's cooked through. It's like still a little pinkish in the dead center. So I'm going to leave it a little bit, like two minutes. Just another minute? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. You know, this is a, a great dish that you could make with any kind of meat. Uh, you know, it's like steak, sirloin, which is like a, a nice uh, cut. You can get a, uh, a choice cut of sirloin, which is pretty tender. And maybe about that thick, and you cook it up like a steak. You got the grill, you cook it on the grill, and you slice it thin, and then you put that compound butter on top, and it all melts. Up. Oh my gosh! So like for if I was doing steak, I would put some gorgonzola cheese into that butter <laughs> with chives, you know, uh, and then put that in there. And then, oh my gosh! Now you got me hungry. None of my diet. Working. It's a little early for you. What do you think? Pork chops are just about done? Yeah, I'd say they are. Those are looking good, Dan. All right. What would you what would so you want Dan, a plate or a bowl? You want a plate up? Yeah. Are you ready to plate? I said what would what would you plate this on if we're uh what would you plate this on if we're doing it with Farrah? Well, you have that rice mixture, right? With yeah. mushrooms? You can put yeah. that on the plate. We're, um, Here we're yeah. Nicholas taking over. Okay. <laughs> you put it on a, a plate. Oh, 
the pork chops on it. There you go. Put it up in a little more of a heat, Nicolette. Put it up on a, on a heat. You can lean the pork chop on it so you get a little more visual, a little height. Yeah, that's cool. And then push it up to a little bit of a mountain. Then you could lean the pork chops on it. Put a couple on if you want. Or one. One's good. Now get the compound butter out. Yep. And normally you can make that up about an hour ahead of time. And then it's easy to unroll and then slice it. So you get a nice quarter size or half a dollar size. Anyone knows what a half a dollar is. And, uh, and put that on there. And make it like about an inch thick. <laughs> Might want to put the butter down on the counter so it's easier to slice if you can slice it. Slice a wedge off. Probably not hard enough. That'll, that'll, well, put a nice neat wedge. <laughs> plop, plop. Then you put it on there and it'll melt from the pork. No, don't spread. What are you guys doing? Ah! She did it. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. You're supposed to just put it on top and let it melt. Melt over it. Oh, you're spreading it like meatloaf. <laughs> That's okay. It'll still taste. You can't. Can you hear me pretty good? I hear you. Everybody else, I think, can hear me. Uh, um. Oops, excuse me. I flipped it. So we all good? I think we're good. That's our pork chop with pecan butter. That's it. Again, if you're entertained, uh, in the stories, we're going to have a link with all the petitions you can sign, places that you can donate where the money actually goes to a great cause. Uh, we started this for Rhode Island Hospitality, really fun. We're still technically doing it for them, but obviously the world is uh, demanding other causes as well. So do, if you can, donate any bit you can, any amount, any bit counts, and we will be, pedal, pedal, pedal. Next week. We'll be here next week. All right, my friends. If you want more recipes, you can go to chefrock.com. This recipe is on there in my recipe file. Pork chops with pecan butter. Yummy. All right. Now I can go for some. We'll see you next week, buddy.